Hi again. Here we are. I have like 11 minutes before the bell rings for the end of the school day. So we're going to try to get this done before then. Okay. So we're going to use trig today to find missing <clears throat> angles. And what you do to, in order to find that, sorry, I didn't have to set up, is the inverse trig ratio. So very similar to what we were doing um, before, but now we're using the inverse. Why is this so hard? Okay, you guys, I'm sorry. Okay, we're gonna use the inverse trig functions. So if you kind of are forgetting, which it's easy to do, let's remind ourselves what an inverse function is quick. So we do this all the time. How do I get x by, my, by itself? We subtract four, right? And then we'd find that x equals two. How would I get x alone in the middle one? Well, we would divide by five. And we'd find that x equals six. And how do you undo something squared? Well, we take the square root. And we'd find that x is seven. So what we just did there are called inverse functions. Like adding and subtracting undo each other. So they're inverse functions. Multiply, divide. Um, undo each other, so they're inverse functions. Squaring and square rooting um, undo each other, so they are inverse functions. So we have the same type of deal for trig, okay? So if we know the sine, cosine, or tangent ratio of an angle, we can use the inverse function. So like you guys see on your calculator where it says negative one, like sine, negative one, cosine, negative one. Um, you can use those to find the angle measures. So just to kind of see what that would look like. So we would have a triangle and we would know the sine ratio is seven over 18, but I wanna find that angle measure. So in order to get that X by itself, we're gonna take the sine inverse of that. Okay, to both sides. So really my signs cancel out. So I'm just left with X. And then in my calculator, I'd use the sine inverse button. And then it's just calculator work and we type it in. And again, thank goodness whoever thought program these for us, did all the work for us. We just have to type it in correctly and it's done. Okay. So let's try a few examples. So it starts off very similarly to what we were doing um, yesterday. Mark your angle. That's our reference angle. Now label your sides. 15 is opposite it. So the opposite. 24 is across from our right angle. So that's our hypotenuse. What trig function uses opposite hypotenuse? That is our sine, right? OH, so you have sine. And normally we'd put our angle there, but we don't know our angle, so we're calling it X. Is equal to, now write your ratio. Opposite over hypotenuse, so 15 over 24. And now again, as always, we're trying to get this X by itself. So in order to do that, we take the sine inverse. Sine inverse. And really, you don't have to write that step if you know what you're doing. You can just write x equals sine inverse of 15 over 24. And then from here, they go your little handy dandy calculator. Okay, so this one's a little different. Can we see it? Why isn't it not on? Okay, there we go. Okay, so you're going to hit second. And now since we're using the sine inverse, you guys see how it says sine negative one over sine, so hit that. And now we'll have the negative one on your calculator. And then your ratio, 15 divided by 24, and your parentheses, hit enter. And we just found that angle to be 38 point, what are we rounding to, does it say? Nope, we'll go to one decimal place, 38.7 degrees. And that's it today, folks. That's what we're doing. Okay, let's try to do it on our phones quick for those that use your phones. So turn it to its side. Can we still see this? Okay, so we're on our side. So you also have to hit the second button. So now do you see where it says sine, cosine, and tangent? When I hit second, we get our handy dandy inverses. Okay, so you're gonna hit 15 divided by 24, enter because that's what the ratio is. Now hit sine inverse, and there it is, folks. We got our angle, which is what we wanted. So one more time on here, so clear it out. Hit your ratio, 15 divided by 24 equals, um, and then hit your 
trig function that you want, which is sine inverse, so 38.6 or 0.7. Okay, let's try another one. So again, we start off by labeling our angle. Label your sides. Eight is a touching it, so it's attached, so that's our adjacent. 11's across from that right angle, so that's our hypotenuse. So now from here, which trig function uses adjacent hypotenuse? That's cosine, so cosine x equals adjacent over hypotenuse, so eight over 11. Now we wanna take the inverse, so I'm gonna write x equals cosine inverse eight divided by 11. And again on your calculator, Hit second, cosine, eight divided by 11, and your parentheses equals, oh, there's a glare, but 43.3 degrees. That's it. Okay, one more. Again, step one, label your angle. Mark your sides. Um, 20 is across, it's opposite. 37 is touching our angle and it's our adjacent. Which one uses opposite adjacent? That would be tangent. So tangent, we don't know our angle, so we call it X. Opposite over adjacent, so 20 over 37. And remember to find your angle, you use the inverse. So x equals tangent inverse of 20 over 37. Again, it's calculator work, kids. It's fun. It's a good time. It is a good time. Second, tangent. So I get that negative 1. 20 divided by 37. So x equals 28.4 degrees. Woohoo! Okay. Then our last one here says solve the right triangle. So when you solve a right triangle, it just means to find the missing angles and the missing side lengths. So on this one, we're missing this angle, this angle, and that side. Should we start with our side? You could use trig or Pythagorean theorem. Um, I'll just use Pythagorean theorem since we're just missing one side. So we'll just call it C. So we're going to have 5 squared plus 9 squared equals C squared. 25 plus 81 equals C squared. 25 and 81 is 106. How do you undo something squared? We take the square root. C equals 10.3. So that's done. That's nice. And now you get to pick. Um, I'll just pick Y. And we'll label our sides so we can find it. 5 would be opposite. 9 would be adjacent. We know that that would be our tangent function. So if I call this, I don't know, let's do B. So if we do tangent of B equals opposite over adjacent. So 5 over 9. To get B by itself, we take the inverse. So tangent inverse of five over nine, calculator work. Second, tangent, five divided by nine is 29. Well, let's go to 29. So angle Y is 29. Now don't make more work for yourself, kids. What's an easy way to find that missing angle X up there? We have a triangle and we know that they add to 180. So 180 minus 90 minus 29 um, gives us 61. So there we go. We found our two missing angles and our missing side. Thanks for watching. I have a minute to spare before the bell rings and kids come rushing the comments. So thank you, thank you. And I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.